evening and welcome to the regular meeting of the Independent City Council for Monday, April 16th, 2018. Our invocation this evening will be offered by Shirley Murdoch, YSA Institute teacher of the LDS Church. If you would please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Our dear Father in heaven, we are gathered together for a city council meeting here in the wonderful city of Independence. And we are grateful for the many good things that our city council has done for the city, such as the solar system and the farmer's market and eradicating blight and refurbish refurbishing homes. And we ask blessings of guidance and inspiration for them as they consider issues uh, at large, such as redevelopment to attract businesses and the smart meters. Are they financially feasible? Are they good for the children? And we ask blessings upon them and are grateful for their willingness to do the things to lead our city. We love thee and give thee, ask these blessings in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam State Clerk, will you please call the roll? Council members. Whiting? Here. Perkins? Here. Doherty? Here. DeLucy? Here. Robertson? Here. Van Camp? Here. Mayor Weir? Here. Okay, this takes us to our consent agenda. Mayor Weir? Council Member Whiting? I will move approval of the consent agenda. Second. Second. Then moved and seconded. Are there any items any council member wishes pulled for separate consideration? Madam Mayor? Yes, Council Member DeLucy? 18732 and 18733. Okay. Ma Please. Madam Mayor? Yes, Councilmember Robinson. And can I ask for just an editorial change on 727? Um, I know Ron Grotenhouse, his name is misspelled. If we oh. could just correct the spelling. It's G-R-O-T-E-N-H-U-I-S. Okay. Thank we you. Will note that for correction. Thank you. Okay. Any other items which hold for separate consideration? Hearing none, please call the roll on the consent agenda minus resolution 18.732 and 18.733. Council members Whiting? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. <coughs> Member DeLucy. Madam Mayor, I wondered if we could just have a little explanation on 18.732 which is a resolution amending the pay plan for non-represented city employees to add a wellness program manager. Yes, uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council, as the council will recall, we have been working on reorganizing a number of the duties associated with the health department. One of those duties involved our community and employee wellness programming, both for the employees of our organization, but really the citizens of independence as well. So, Madam Mayor, members of the council, this position would transfer uh, that position from the health department to the parks, rec, and tourism department, really matching the staff associated with that program with the employees or with the uh, resources that we have in our community focused on wellness. Um, here in a few weeks, we will be presenting the council with a proposal to renew our employee health insurance with Cigna. Part of that proposal contains a incentive from, Cisna, from Cigna for employee wellness, $150,000 per year for the next three years as a result of our renewed uh, focus on employee wellness and community wellness. So very excited about the potential for this uh, programming, very excited about the uh, reorganization associated with it and happy to answer any further questions you may have. Madam Mayor, I move approval of that item. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Whiting? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Bankamp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. 
Um, resolution passes. Councilmember DeLucy. Regarding um, resolution 18733, that directs the city manager to issue a request for a proposal on advancing our renewable energy sources. And I know that we're having a study that's coming in in June or July regarding power. And I just wondered, could you explain this resolution and why we should do this now as opposed to waiting until after our study comes in? Uh, the, the study mayor and members of the council that Councilwoman DeLucy is referring to is of course the uh, energy master plan looking at Blue Valley Power Plant and the uh, antiquated power production it has now and what the needs and best interests of the community are moving forward. Uh, that study will be presented to the council anticipating June uh, of this year. Um, as you know, the council a few years ago engaged in a request for proposal process that resulted in the city building a phase one solar farm with MC Power at uh, the Bunshu site, we call it out on Bunshu Road, three and a half megawatts of power there, and then expanding to an additional site, secondary site at the former Rockwood Golf Course for eight megawatts there. So a total of 11 and a half megawatts, but that completed our original agreement with um, uh, MC Power. Also made um, Independence the largest community solar farm in Missouri. Have to get that poke in real quick. Um, <laughs> but um, we have had several folks, including MC Power, approach the city about doing additional solar capacity within the city. Um, but I am at my ability to um, issue an RFP and really wanted to um, get council's policy direction on whether or not we feel at this time we want to go ahead and move forward with that. Uh, several sites around town have been mentioned by several firms that explore um, solar capacity, community solar, but really wanted to utilize this resolution to get some direction from the council about which way we want to go. Mr. City Manager, are we sold out on the second phase of the solar? The second phase at uh, my last update from MC Power was 50%, 51% sold out to be exact. And that was about two weeks ago that I received an update. And is there a reason to do this now? Doesn't it make more sense to wait until after we get the study in? It really, um, Councilwoman, we could go either direction on that. Um, you know, if the, 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 the community has certainly shown a strong interest in solar um, to this point. Um, but, but there is the possibility that the power production study could provide us some more uh, insight on which direction we want to go. Truly, though, um, this is really a matter of, of policy decision by the council on how aggressively we want to continue to chase solar production in the city of Independence. Well, Madam Mayor, I, I just don't know that now is the time to proceed with this. I, I would feel more comfortable waiting until after we get the power study in, in June. I don't want to say no, but I think it's premature to say yes. Um, Mr. City Manager, um, if I understand this correctly, this is, what this is doing is simply giving the direction to issue the request for proposal. Um, maybe if you could just give us a sense of what that typically I mean, we do these a lot, mm -hmm. but you know how long that process takes to develop that, to distribute it, how long it, you would require for it to be out. And then when the responses come back, you, you know, we, we certainly have some time to decide if we want to move forward with this. But I feel that we, um, the demand um, is great. This council has already passed a resolution um, to pursue being the greenest city in America. So it doesn't commit us to any type of timeline is of my understanding of constructing any new projects or taking on any new responsibilities, but simply lets us get into what is a very active market. Because we previously have a, an RFP process we've gone through related to the two sites that I mentioned, mm -hmm. I, I don't think it would take a tremendous amount of time to revise that and reissue it related to further production. I, I would say staff would probably feel most comfortable with having this out for a minimum of 30 days just to give ample opportunity, given the complexity of solar power production, and then, of course, a few weeks to evaluate it and make a sound recommendation to the council. So the timing may line up to where, at that point, we're also considering the power production study at the same time and give the council a better sense of all of our power supply needs for the city. Okay. So, I mean, there, 
really isn't any commitment uh, this evening other than to develop an issue that RFP and then as the responses come back in 30 to 45 days, but probably maybe by the time we develop it and get it out, then the council, you know, may be given a recommendation to approve. And, and I want to be clear, this would in no way yeah. be binding yeah. to the city I mean, and staff may even come forward and recommend that we really don't feel comfortable at this time with anyone or we may have a, a series of recommendations, but it would really allow us to get a better sense of, of, of how serious some of these firms are that are approaching the city right now, but to do, throw, do so through our official procurement yeah. processes. Okay, very good. Council Member Delucy. I move approval of 18733. <coughs> second. second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Whiting? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? No. Robertson? Yes. Finkamp? Yes. Mayor Ware? Yes. Resolution passes. Um, before we start our regular agenda, we have some public hearings and um, some second readings. I would like to um, recommend a motion to suspend the rules of procedure so we can allow our speakers to speak um, on the topic of smart meters prior to the vote. Um, so I would entertain a motion to suspend the rules of order. So moved. Second. So moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Whiting? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. So um, prior to the second readings um, of the ordinances on um, smart in reference to smart meters, I'll call you forward and you can give your testimony. Um, this takes us to our public hearings. Our first is a public hearing for the application by Architectural Stone Products LLC requesting a rezoning from RA residential agricultural to I-1 Industrial for the property located at 20225 East R. D. Mize Road. This is new information only. Mr. Scannell. Yes, Mayor and members of the Council. My name is Tom Scannell. I'm the Community Development Director. There's no new information to report on this case. Is there any comments or questions from the Council? Public hearing is closed. Madam City Clerk. Bill number 18-027, an ordinance amending the zoning district map as to attractive ground located at 20225 East R.D. Mize Road from District R6 Single Family Residential to District I-1 Industrial in Independence, Jackson County, Missouri. Second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? <coughs> Madam Mayor. Yes, Council Member Robertson. Just, just wanted to comment. <clears throat> I had a uh, conversation uh, with this company uh, a number of months ago, and I'm glad to see that that we're going to be able to keep them in independence. They're a longtime independence company, and they're growing. They're on the move. Um, they've just had problems where they were, were located before and uh, needed more room. And they're going to be now in a quarter that's going to be part of growth for independence. That, I believe this will bring in a number of new jobs for independence as well. And we're looking forward to having them as, as a larger player in the independence industrial area. Thanks. Thank you very much. Certainly uh, developing more industrial um, companies and growing industrial companies in our city has been a key priority, so I'm very excited to have this before us this evening. Is there any other comments or questions? Yes, Council Member Doherty. Thank you. Uh, this was located formerly in the second district. I hate to lose it to Scott down there, but I'm glad to keep it in independence. Uh, they've run out of room. They can't expand due to some construction constraints. So we want the building to be bigger. We want the company to stay here and expand. So this is, this is great. We just need to make a rezoning thing out there for it. And it's going to be out where we're proposing an industrial area anyway. So it's, it's a really good fit for it. So I, I do support this. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Whiting? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Ordinance passes. Our next public hearing is a public hearing for the application by RWMO Inc. DBA right away 
right way automotive credit requesting a special use permit to operate a used vehicle sales business at 3225 <coughs> and 3237 South Nolan Road. This is new information only. Mr. Scannell. Yes, Mayor, members of the council, there's no new information to report on this case. Mm -hmm. Are there any comments or questions from the council? Hearing none, the public hearing is closed. Madam City Clerk. Bill number 18-028, an ordinance approving a special use permit to operate a used vehicle sales lot at 3225 and 3237 South Nolan Road in Independence, Jackson County, Missouri. Second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Mayor. Yes, Councilmember Robertson. I, I also have Sorry, had... I sometimes have a hard time seeing it down at that end. <laughs> I also have had an opportunity to talk with some of these folks as well. Um, this is on a used car lot now. It's, it's been a used car lot. It's between um, the old Lincoln Mercury dealership and the Enterprise dealership. Um, and it's been a used car lot for quite a few years right down from Truman High School. So I believe they will bring some, some new and refreshing <laughs> uh, opportunities uh, to that location. It's sitting empty right now, I believe. Uh, so this, this will be good. And we want cars on Nolan Road. So. Thanks. Very good. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Whiting? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Ware? Yes. Ordinance passes. Our third public hearing is a public hearing on the form formation of the new town at Harmony Community Improvement District. This is a full public hearing. Mr. Scannell. Yes, Mayor and members of the Council, this public hearing is to form the new town at, at Harmony uh, Community Improvement District to fund uh, public in improvements as well as public services within the new town development. Uh, the CID boundary is covering the entire new town development. They are proposing a special assessment that will be imposed on the real property uh, as each phase is developed. Um, that special assessment will be used to reimburse the developer for public infrastructure improvements in each phase. Uh, for the first phase that's under construction right now, uh, the, special the special assessment will be imposed in 2019. Um, in addition to the special assessment, the district will impose a one cent sales tax on retail sales within the district. And that's gonna be used to uh, fund the um, special services that are offered uh, within the development. Uh, the petition outlines uh, all of this information. Uh, as far as the special assessment, it outlines the maximum annual special assessment. And that ranges anywhere from $600 per year up to $1,000. And it's, it's a floating scale that is dependent on the size of, of the lot. We have representatives here from, from Gilmore Bell who represent the city, as well as uh, the applicant is, is here. So that concludes my presentation and, and we're available for any questions. Okay, thank you. Um, is there anybody, this is a full public hearing. Is there anyone present who would like to speak in support of this item? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Public hearing is closed. Are there any comments or questions from the council? Okay. This takes us to our non-ordinance action item. Madam City Clerk. Approved. Approval of a pre-development agreement for the Eastgate Business Park with Sally Real Estate Investments, LLC. Okay, is there any discussion on this item? Madam Mayor. Yes, Council Member DeLucy. I do have some questions on this item. As I understand it, we're looking at building a road that costs around $964,000, and I just don't know where the money's gonna come from to build that road. If we're going to be taking it from our funds, if we're going to have bonds, what we're going to do. And I also understand that we're looking at waiving fees and other costs that will bring the total project citywide $1.24 million. So I'd like to know where that money's coming from. Uh, Councilman, your first question about uh, where the funding would come for the construction of the road, um, access road into the development site, uh, staff has kicked around a number of ideas. Um, 
I think our most recent idea that we would recommend to the council, and, and let me back up by saying that no action taken by the council tonight is, is binding. These lay out the terms and conditions by which the developer would go and seek to secure private financing for their project and allow them to uh, market what the city's position would be in terms of supporting various development costs. Uh, a final development agreement would have to come back to the council and be approved before uh, incentives would be given, before any expenditures would be made. Um, so we still have some time to, to settle up, but our, our recommendation about what we would do in terms of funding, um, obviously right now this is a bean field. It's not producing any um, electric utility revenue for the city of Independence as that's not being served uh, for any electrical utility purpose. I believe what we would recommend doing is um, cr constructing the uh, site, the road in there, utilizing our street sales tax funds, $964,000, and reimbursing the street sales tax fund with the new utility revenues uh, from that property. So any incremental revenue that comes from this specific building in terms of power supply to the industrial site would be used to reimburse the um, street sales tax fund. Um, that is the concept at this point. It doesn't require final approval by the council tonight. But that is that uh, would be our recommendation at this time. In okay. terms of your second question about the money for the waive uh, the permit fees, the tap fees, et cetera, that doesn't require the city to make any expenditure. It's simply foregoing the revenue that we would generate if the applicant were um, to, to pay those costs uh, in keeping with the city code. And Mr. City Manager, why should we do this for this applicant? Um, we just had an architectural stone. They're coming basically right across the street, and we're not giving them any any breaks like this. So why why this project? Why do this now? It's been my understanding that even long before my tenure with the city, uh, the city has been trying to jumpstart industrial development in the city of Independence. Long, long ago, the city set out on a path that has led to the bread and butter of this community being commercial development, commercial retail sales, and that has served the city well for many years. The 39th Street Corridor in particular, the Independence Center, those have been our bread and butter both in terms of employers and revenue to this city. But as we all know, that is a practice which is drying up. As our consumers shift more to online purchases and online sales, those jobs are going away and the revenues associated with them to local governments are going away as well. So we need to shift to a new paradigm and we believe that new paradigm is industrial development. We believe we have a highly qualified workforce that lends itself to this. Our community historically has relied upon these types of jobs, like the old Alice Chalmers site, the old Amico plant, the old BP refinery. All these, of course, not in our community, but n nearby and adjacent. So this is kind of in the DNA of independence. Um, it's also important to help stabilize our rates for independence, power, and light. Um, one of our uh, peer uh, power suppliers, BPU in Kansas City, <coughs> Kansas, has a portfolio of electric uh, users that is made up of 30% industrial. Here in Independence, that's closer to 2 to 3%. We've tried for years to incentivize and jumpstart industrial development in the city. Uh, I think we're closer than we've ever been, but it is going to require the city to help share and participate in some of the risk in order to prove market to the development community in the Kansas City Metro. You see a substantial amount of industrial development happening around the city. Um, most of that concentrated over on the Kansas side in the Gardner Edgerton Industrial Park. Lots of it concentrated up north in the Kansas City, uh, uh, what they call KCI Business Park. Um, it's time to bring those jobs here. We are at a competitive disadvantage when we ask our economic development staff to try to market and compete uh, against these large industrial users and all we have to show is either substandard product or a bean field. Um, so it is going to require some level of city participation to help get it going. Um, I think staff has done their level best to make sure that risk is minimized and the need for public incentives is kept as low as possible, but we do believe this is mostly in keeping with what you would typically see for this type of a development project. Which leads me to my final question, which is I was on the Planning Commission for years and sure. And I was promised office, Class A office, and we never got Class A office. And I noticed in this, we are promised industrial, office, and retail. How much is retail? How much is office? How much is industrial? 
the initial portion of this project, and I, I guess it would be fair to characterize this as phase one, um, would open up, this road would open up four lots in a 91 acre area. So the total acreage is 91 acres, but it would open up four lots within that immediate area for what we believe would be industrial development. It'll be up to the development community to determine how those dominoes tip from there, how much would be industrial and office and commercial. Um, I would tell you that selfishly, I hope almost all of it exclusively is industrial because I think that's what's going to help, like I said, stabilize our electric utility rates and also provide the level and type of jobs that we want to see. But that will be up to the development community to determine what type of development unfolds in this area. Will we have any voice in it before we execute the final development agreement? In terms of... I don't want to see retail. Your final development agreement will only unfold those four lots right there and will mandate the developer to build the first building, which would be 100,000 square feet industrial site. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes. Councilman Robertson. Just wanted to add to what our, our city manager has said. <clears throat> Over the past five or more years, the Independence Economic Development Council has talked about the opportunity to draw in new industrial customers and industrial jobs to the city of Independence and we continue to fall farther and farther behind all the other communities around us and unless we help jumpstart this process and get some uh, buildings up some industrial buildings people that are uh, and companies that are wanting to move want to move in a matter of months and it doesn't give time for them to actually build a building so the Economic Development Council has recommended this five years ago, and, and we have not been in a position until now with this particular developer who is willing to put millions of dollars into this property. And so all they're asking is for us to help jumpstart that by putting a road in. It's only going to be a dead-end road to begin with. They're going to have to extend it to the other buildings, but it's going to give them the start of four sites with one building, and I expect if that takes off, and I expect it to within the first year, that we may have over the course of the next five to ten years hundreds of new jobs coming to Independence and new residents. So it's up to this council to have that vision, to see what the possibilities are for the future, and that's what this council is about. You know, this council looks at those possibilities down the road and the opportunities that this holds for independence in the future, just like the development at New Harmony for new residents. Thank you. Um, we, through our Economic Development Corporation, are members of the Kansas City Area Development Council. Um, and every week or so, the KCADC sends out a list of projects um, that it is actively working on in our community. Um, there's normally 10 to 15 of those um, in the, on the list that we see, and nearly every single one of them is an industrial user looking for 300,000 square feet, 500,000 square feet. It's, um, and we can't respond to those requests right now. We don't have anything to show to get into the competition for those jobs and um, those development opportunities. And we have a wonderful, wonderful asset in, our, in the Little Blue Parkway. This community did not work for decades and spend millions of dollars to construct that road for it to be a nice drive in the country. That, that's an area of town that we need to leverage to produce revenue to benefit the citizens of this community. So this is a first step. There is a lot um, of work yet to take place. Um, there is no demand for retail right now in this current market. There's minimal demand for um, Class A office space. It would be nice to have a combination of industrial and office, but the demand right now is for industrial. And I, um, we have, this is something we've worked on for a number of years, certainly as long as I've been on this council and well before. And um, I'm excited that we were to this point where we're able to make a decision for the city to make a commitment as to what we are willing to contribute to make this happen for our community. 
Are there any other comments or questions? Madam Mayor. Yes, Councilmember Perkins. Thank you, Mr. City Manager. Um, this is non-binding. So what type of tool will this give the real estate company if this is approved? This would allow um, both the developer that we've been directly speaking with or any other developer that may become interested uh, to recognize that this is a policy statement of what the council would be willing to support if a developer is able to come forward and meet the terms and conditions that the city's laying forward. So does this just gives them a tool to go get financing, to get whatever they need to, to move that project forward? Yes, it would allow them, uh, again, the specific developer that we've been in discussions with to go forward and uh, meet with the banking institutions, lending institutions, and try to secure the most favorable private financing deal that they could, which we're, of course, out of. But it is also, um, it's a statement to other developers. If for some reason this one were not to work out, and I don't anticipate that, but that would allow others to see what the city's official position is on this matter. Fair enough. So my second question with the things that I look at the most and most quickly is the fiscal impact. This is pretty broad. So if there's a final agreement, will that have more specific exactly where we're going to move funds to help pay for this road? Absolutely. A final development agreement would trigger not only this level of specificity that you're hoping to see about how those dollars would be allocated, but also the timeline for those activities as well. See, that's the same concern that I have um, as the councilwoman's. This is pretty broad. And uh, I'd like to see progress move forward, but I'd like to see us do it in a way that's, that's prudent. Beginning with the Public Utility Advisory Board meeting this Thursday, we're going to be working on hammering out those final um, policy recommendations for the council about while the developer is out working on securing their financing, we'll be doing the same in terms of making final determinations about the most appropriate way to utilize public funds for this project. And that's this Thursday you're engaging then? April 19th, yes, Perfect. sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council Members Whiting? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Item passes. Before we move on to our second reading, we have some scouts here this evening that I'd like to recognize. Thank you. So this is my last meeting on the Independent City Council, and one of the things that I've really enjoyed is introducing and welcoming our scouts when they've come here. So it's great that we've got uh, quite a few scouts in attendance tonight, and you guys picked a humdinger of a meeting to come to, which is great. Um, we've got 11 scouts and five leaders from Troop 646. If you would all stand and be recognized for our 646. Fantastic. That's great, and it says you're working on the Citizenship and Community Merit Badge, which is fantastic. Oh, and I should mention you're from the uh, Independence Third Ward of the LDS Church. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you to the Scouts for being involved in scouting, for taking an interest in your own self-betterment, the betterment of your community, and thank you to the leaders for the effort that you put into these boys. We certainly appreciate it. Thank you for coming out. And then I see some 282 hats over here. Do we have another Scout troop that came in? Would you all stand and be recognized, please? <laughs> and, and the same uh, for you. And I don't have information on where you're from, but can you just tell me what, uh, where your troop is? Trinity Episcopal Church. Very good. Well, thank you, too, for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. OK, now we will move on to our second readings. Um, the first two um, are in regards to advanced metering infrastructure, which our speakers requested to speak to the council about. Our first speaker is Lucy Young, who requests to speak to the council regarding smart meters. If you would come forward and state your name for the record. Um, Mrs. Young, since you've spoken on this topic um, previously, you will have three minutes, and the city clerk will keep the time at the, um, at the dais, let you know when you have one minute remaining. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My name is Lucy Young. I live on Viking Drive in Independence, Missouri. And I'm gonna speak specifically tonight to Mr. Whiting because you are gonna be leaving behind a legacy. Mrs. For Young, um, our council rules of procedure are that you are to address the entire council and no I'm council addressing, member yes. individually. Thank <laughs> yes, you. Yes, I will. Um, 
but I have a, a recommendation that you take your vote very seriously because Mr. Huff will be taking your spot and you will be leaving a legacy for him. Uh, hope is a poor business plan. Please call a moratorium on the, I, the, AMI, the AMI installation to protect citizens' rights to opt out and discuss more balanced research on health risks and security safety impacts of smart metering. Bio excuse me, Bioinitiative Research 2012 has 2017 health risk information that was not cited in the city study. They're brand new results and very complex, and I would like for them to take a look at it again. Um, the City of Independence Advanced Metering Infrastructure Report is nowhere to be found online. I searched every department. I looked at every uh, PUAB meeting. I looked for public m uh, meeting notices. None of that was complied with, and I ask you to create a blue ribbon panel that will allow people to, to not only look over these health initiatives, but also to other initiatives that have to do with the security. The uh, Reuters technology, excuse me, I'm nervous because there's a million people here, <laughs> so my apologies. Um, census provided information that attempts to de debunk all our concerns. But Census is, an is not an independent testing lab and has a vested interest in selling smart meters. Reuters Technology News reported that Asylum bought Census for around $1.7 billion cash. So it's a very lucrative business that we're looking at. Mr. Boatwright, your uh, utility director, came from a town where the, the citizens did not want this metering and they actually had to return the government grant. He eventually piecemealed in these meters, but the consensus from the citizens were they did not want these meters to begin with. Ms. Young, one minute. Thank you. Um, Census was in partnership with another company that now has litigation with the state of uh, Washington, uh, specifically Seattle, because like our law that, uh, our, I'm sorry, I'm so nervous, uh, gave out sunshine requirements, they inadvertently gave out what was considered security risk information. It is now posted on the web and it can be found by, uh, by their own acknowledgement, released also the threat to the public for immediate harm by revealing specific information about plaintiff's proprietary network models, which will allow hackers, cyber criminals, nation states engaged in cyber warfare to overcome these network security future features with potentially devastating consequences for Seattle and for the citizens of other cities and countries around the world where these meters are deployed. I asked questions about whether or not the meter boxes should be upgraded and I have not received an answer. I asked whether or not my insurance would cover it if the meter box was insufficient, arced and caused the fire. I have not received any information. I appreciate Mr. White's and his group's uh, internet because otherwise if they had not had that online, I wouldn't have even been able to look at the city uh, recommendations for the audit. So uh, for these AMIs to be involved. Ms. Young, uh, your time's up. Sorry for that. And I apologize for stuttering. Thank you. <laughs> Our next Speaker is Jason White, who requests to speak to the council regarding smart meters. Mr. White, you'll have five minutes. Hey, my name is Jason White. I live at 1024 South Forest. I'm here to support the smart meters. Frankly, the conversation you've already had today about uh, industrial development goes right down that vein. The progressive nature of the energy policy that you've enacted here the last few years, the putting in solar, very creative to put in solar and, and uh, fill in, in Rockwood Country Club, purchasing of wind, shutting down, shifting from coal to natural gas. It's all moving to provide more efficiency, more cost-effective electric services. That's what this is going to do as well. I appreciate the concerns and the passions of folks that say that there's health hazards. I serve on your Board of Health. 
except for myself, you have an excellent Board of Health. You have a <laughs> bunch of very smart, talented people, physicians and nurses, that have done research. They looked at the research. There, there isn't health effects from this. There's, there's a lot of internet chatter, but when you get down to the core research, it's an extremely safe offering to the community. But that doesn't matter, because on this policy issue, you can have it both ways. When you look at the history of this issue, most of the places haven't given an opt-out. They've just said to the citizens, you're going to get it because we own the meter. Since you own the electric company, you don't have to do it that way. Now, some of the opt-out proposals out there are a fraud. And frankly, I think if you have a reasonable opt-out process, the 90 to 95% of us in the city that are going to say, we don't care or we want it, as many of us do, are going to be benef benefiting from this, and everybody's going to benefit from the cost savings. So you can have it both ways. You don't have to make decisions on the health and the privacy and the safety issues as long as you're affording the individuals. Now, the pushback there is, well, we don't get all the benefit if we don't have everybody involved. Well, if you get 95% of the, of the benefit, that's a pretty darn good deal. So if we, if we let everybody that's sitting behind me with their signs leave here saying, I'm going to opt out, and I'm not going to have to pay an onerous fee and go through a bunch of malarkey to do that, you've ended up with a win-win. Because at the end of the day, I get to have a smart meter, and I get the benefits, and I think 90 95% of the citizens are going to have smart meters, and so we're going to have efficiency, and that turns into cost savings, and that turns into you're not asking for a rate increase as soon. And let me assure you that those of us that are interested in this issue are looking for the savings. And if we're not going to get savings and you're going to turn around and ask us for a rate increase in a year or so, what are we supposed to be asking you when you've turned down an opportunity for efficiency that turns into cost savings? So I think you all have got a wonderful position, but it's, it's being a little progressive with the opt-out. Let me touch on the uh, fire safety issues. I live in an old house. I may be in the oldest house of anybody that lives here, that's here in the <laughs> room right now. These are issues that concern me. But I also th have respect for the quality of the technical expertise of our folks at IPL. Not quite sure of some of the management issues in the past. I read the audit, but frankly, we've got wonderful linemen and technicians. They know their job. Let them do their job. Where they find those mounting boxes that aren't any good, you've pre-programmed some funding. Do I care if instead of a return on investment, it's eight and a half years instead of eight years because you, you're dealing with some 1940 construction and making it safe for, for my neighbors? Absolutely not. Take 95%, chalk up a win, make everybody happy, and, and let's, let's continue the progressive nature of which you've structured in our community. Last thing I want to touch on is the fact that we've had a very good bid process. That was an excellent process you went through. We actually handed it off to some purchasing professionals in the area, and they said, wow, it was a good process. So don't, don't get iffy on we need to rebid the thing. You've had two years. You've had a lot of study. You've had $500,000 in consultants. You've had a good bid process. Provide an opt-out for the citizens that have genuine, heartfelt concerns and let the rest of us move forward with the efficiencies that we're going to find with the smart meters and let all of us benefit from the projected 40 some million dollars worth of savings over the next 15 years because of the increased efficiency that this is going to bring to the table. Thank you very much. Thank you. Madam City Clerk, we can proceed with the second readings. Bill number 17-114, an ordinance authorizing execution of a contract with West Monroe Partners, LLC, in an amount not to exceed $2,620,550 for project management services to assist the city during the advanced metering infrastructure, AMI, implementation, and authorizing future minor change orders for an amount not to exceed $262,055 and or time extensions. Second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Councilmember Robertson. 
Mayor, I, from discussions with uh, the city manager's office, and I think he has discussed this with many of us, there are many other options um, that we are pursuing as far as uh, saving some money on this particular contract. And so I would move that we table this ordinance. Postpone indefinitely. indefinitely. Postpone indefinitely, or? Yes. Table. Postpone yeah. indefinitely. Postpone indefinitely. Second. Been Second. I'm sorry. I, it's been moved and seconded to postpone to postpone indefinitely. One seven one one four. Is there any discussion? Yes. Madam Mayor. Yes. So, to my understanding, six months ago, staff has recommended 2.6 million to help oversee this, and now we're we're tabling that. Councilman Robertson, I, I didn't understand your question. Six months ago, city staff put, and we had a first reading that we shouldn't spend 2.6 million dollars to Monroe, and now we're going to table that. We've already had Monroe do a lot of the planning for us. It's my understanding. So now there are some other companies that are available and can do it a lot cheaper, and some of it will be done in-house. Some of the overseeing will be done by our own, our own staff at IPL. I'm, I'm all for that. Don't, so don't get me wrong. I'm can, all for that. So I, I'm just trying to figure out in my mind, in six months, we're able to save that much money. That's uh, Mr. City Manager, would you mind just kind of uh, ex yeah, it is, explain to the, yeah, the council what the... Um, Several, um, sure, when we initiated this project back in 2015, it was doing a very high level of assessment with West Monroe Partners. And then West Monroe Partners, of course, guided the blueprint development process, and then, of course, the final phase, which was the development of the RFP and the evaluation. So staff had a pretty strong, robust comfort level with them and was recommending them for project management uh, of the implementation of the project itself. During the... Uh, I guess you could call the off season while we were considering the, the health benefits or concerns related to this project. Staff really took that time to reevaluate what are the what are the true needs and recognize that there may be other vendors out there, one in particular that we'd probably be bringing uh, an ordinance back to council, but believe we can save somewhere in the neighborhood of $1.5 million by utilizing groups that are every bit as superior, but um, much more efficient and economical in terms of the dollars that could be saved by Independence Power and Light. Thank you. So thanks goodness that we were able to uh, wait six months to try to work <laughs> this out. So okay. right. I'm just trying to work this out in my head too. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Madam Mayor? Yes. Uh, this uh, with West Monroe is format in the city. And whether we go on with this ever again, we would need this information. And this is money well spent if, if that's correct I mean we whenever vendor comes in here would have to do this would have to format the city in order to put up the places and anything that come in here they would use that information am I right the, on this the product that you've been given by West Monroe yes is very sound they've, they've laid out a an evaluation process and a blueprint for implementation for for the city and we believe uh, a more economical approach is available to us for management and implementation of this project. This decision is one of the great consequence to our community, and I, I feel that there's more questions and more answers that are needed. And the decision of the city, it would be my preference then to schedule this, as we have already said. Thank you. Hey, are there any other discussion? on the motion. Okay. Madam City Clerk, will you please read the motion? The motion is to postpone indefinitely bill number 17-114. Please call the roll. Council members Whiting? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Motion passes. Bill. Uh, 
Bill number 17-115, an ordinance authorizing execution of an agreement for advanced metering infrastructure contract services with Corin Maine LP in the amount of $29,698,667 and further authorizing execution of agreements for software, services, and support with the Census USA Incorporated North Harris Computer Corporation and Acceleron Software LLC increasing appropriations in the amount of $10,467,362 from the Power and Light Fund, $15,618,390 from the Water Fund, and $1,735,377 from the Water Pollution Control Fund for the Electric and Water Advanced Metering Infrastructure Project and authorizing future minor change orders for an amount not to exceed $2,501,921 and or time extensions. Second and final reading. Is there a discussion on this bill? Councilmember Robertson. Yes, Mayor. Um, there's several things that I would like to say. First of all, I want to offer an amendment. And I think I put a copy at each, um, each of your places tonight. Um, Madam Clerk, would you like to read that amendment, or do you want me to read it? You can read if you like. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, this is being read into the record. This is City of Independence Advanced Meter Opt-Out Policy. The obje objective is the City of Independence recognizes that some customers may not want to be a part of the Advanced Metering Infrastructure Program. The objective of this policy is to outline the criteria under which such a customer may opt out of the program Customers electing to opt out will receive non-communicating meters. The policy. A, the opt-out program shall be available to all utility account owners who own their property associated with the account, except for the following accounts. A, commercial and industrial utility customers. B, utility customers participating in special programs such as net metering for solar energy production. C, account holders residing in multi-unit housing structures containing two or more housing units. A housing unit is defined by the Census Bureau as a house, apartment, group of homes, or a single room occupied or intended for occupancy as separate living quarters. D, utility accounts that have received disconnect notices within 24 months prior to requesting the opt-out program. E, utility accounts with more than two name changes within one year period. F, utility accounts with a, metering, with a meter that is inaccessible to read e.g. physical obstructions, hazardous conditions, animals, or denial of access. G, utility accounts with a history of metering tampering. B, non-property owners who wish to opt out of the advanced metering program must receive written permission from the property owner. C, account owners who elect to enroll in the advanced meter out, opt-out program will provide the City of Independence with a completed opt-out request form signifying their agreement to the terms and conditions outlined on the form. D, account owners who opt out will be informed that they will not be able to participate in potential saving strategies through the advanced metering program or receive benefits such as customer programs associated with AMI, e.g. prepay service, future alternative rate structures, access to some features of the customer portal, enhanced safety features, automated power outage reporting, water leak detection notification. <coughs> Opt-out fees. A, no opt-out fees, whether one-time or reoccurring, will be charged to utility customers who wish to opt out during the AMI deployment, June 2018 through February 2021. The city reserves the right to establish opt-out fees after AMI deployment to cover the associated costs to the city for installation, operation, and maintenance of non-communicating meters. A discount will be applied to all opt-out charges for qualified low-income customers. A, one-time cost-based service fee. Utility customers who wish to opt out during AMI deployment, June 2018 through February 2021, will not be charged a one-time cost-based service fee. The city reserves the right to establish a one-time cost-based service fee based on the cost of installation of a non-communicating meter once full deployment is complete, amount to be determined. B, recurring cost-based administrative fee. Utility customers who wish to opt out during AMI deployment June 2018 through February 2021 will not be charged a reoccurring cost-based service fee. The city reserves the right to establish a monthly opt-out customer administration fee based on the actual cost for manual meter reading and billing once full deployment is complete. 
amount to be determined. I'll second the motion. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Councilmember Doherty. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is pretty weak opt-out. Uh, matter of fact, it's really not an opt-out at all. So if you're a commercial customer, you can't have a choice. It says if you've got special programs such as solar, and solar you still have a regular meter, you can't opt out either. If you're a, in a uh, any kind of a housing unit that's a fourplex, a triplex, then you don't have the option for you this. Uh, if you're, you've disconnect notice, doesn't say you disconnect, you just had a notice within 24 months, uh, you can't. Utility with two name changes, you can't. And here's one that really gets everybody, if they say, well, we couldn't get in because you had an animal, or they wouldn't let me in, or it was their steps were slick and it's hazardous they won't count history of meter tampering non-property owners don't count because if you live in an apartment and it's an out-of-town owner he probably is not going to give you permission um, here's one here you won't uh, on the opt-outs you won't get the future alternative rate structure so if there's a better rate structure you won't get it um, to me, I, I don't think that's much of an opt-out. It seems like it's got more loopholes than, than anything, so I, I just can't support that. That's not a true opt-out at all. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Madam Mayor? Amend? Yes, Councilmember Van Camp. Uh, I haven't seen this, and it, it, it hadn't been brought to me until tonight, and uh, I, I wouldn't want to pick it apart here, but I definitely believe there should be an opt-out and I think we should have more study on it and put in what should be yeah. and the people have a voice in how it's done and seen is there any further discussion on the amendment mayor, mayor. Yes, Council if we choose not to add the opt-out policy now what would the be what would council's position be to add the opt-out later if the motion or if the ordinance is passed it would be my understanding council member that we can offer an opt-out at any time given that we own our own public utility it's uh, your parameters as council to set the policies for that electric utility okay thank you councilman robertson I've been working on this for a couple of weeks. I've had discussions and we've had several iterations of the policy back and forth between both IPL and the um, uh, city manager's office. So uh, we have talked about this. There were a lot more things in it than there are now. <clears throat> so this is a very simplified version of what we originally started with. I think it's very fair and I think uh, we, we need to give the option of opt out if we're going to consider AMI. And I think this is a great starting point. It can be amended down the road. So it's not something that can't be amended. Uh, and we can have further discussion. This is a very, I think, generous uh, opt-out policy compared to probably four or five others that I looked at from other utilities across Missouri and the United States. This is, <laughs> this is very, very kind to our residents and our citizens and independents. So I would encourage you to uh, pass this as an amendment. Um, I, I do want to speak to the uh, the main motion, so I'll wait to do that until we consider the amendment. Okay, let's, um, if there's no further discussion on the motion to, for the amendment to include <coughs> the opt-out policy, Madam City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Council members Whiting? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? No. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? No. Mayor Weir? No. Motion passes. Okay. Um, is there further discussion on Ordinance 17115? Yes. Mayor. Mayor Robertson? <coughs> Uh, 
A number of months ago, I bought a little electromagnetic radiation tester sitting right up here. Unfortunately, it's not sold in the city of Independence, so I could not buy it here and pay my sales tax. <laughs> and so I had to buy it from Amazon. And of course, I paid the use tax or sales tax to the state of Missouri, but I didn't, and that was about 4.5%. I didn't get to pay the 2.25% to the uh, city of Independence because the use tax did not pass. We're missing out, we're missing out. So here's my 72 cents. <laughs> for, the, for the meter. That's the use tax that I would have paid. It's about a 30 to $35 meter. I checked a lot of places. It measures electromagnetic radiation, RF signals. Um, most of the places where the signal is, is highest is around um, cell phones, around um, uh, Wi-Fi, uh, Wi-Fi signals, especially where you have your router in your house, that's where the highest signal and the highest measures are. But they're not that high, even with a cell phone, even with the router. The router's higher than the cell phone. And of course, those routers are communicating 24-7, 365 days a year. The meters will not. And so that's what I wanted to talk about for just a minute. Um, the report by our Board of Health, which has physicians, dentists, a uh, number of practitioners on that board, looked at a lot of the research. The WHO, the World Health Organization, says no convincing evidence supporting short-term or long-term adverse effects. There are ongoing studies, and I would recommend that you look for Cochrane studies. Cochrane studies are studies of studies. And they're the ones that use the very scientific research to decide which studies fall into their Cochrane study, usually of about a thousand studies. So look online and look for Cochrane studies. The frequency and the power of the RF waves are equal to a cell phone or a wireless phone. And they transmit about six times a day with a total of one second per day. They transmit in milliseconds. So it equals about 15 minutes a day of cell phone use. I would challenge each of you, how many of you use your cell phone more than 15 minutes a day? I bet everybody here does. Fire concerns. These new sensors that we're talking about have embedded in them a sensor that, will, that the other meters don't, even the ones that have been installed in the past couple years don't have a sensor that will shut down the meter and send the signal to the dispatch if there's a problem with overheating. It will shut it down. Lakeland, Florida put in 125,000 meters. We're talking about 55,000 here. It was an older version. They had six problems, six problems out of 125,000 and they replaced 10 and a half thousand meters. KCPNL just finished installing over 700,000 meters. Only six malfunctioned. Kansas City BPU installed 70,000 advanced meters, and they have had zero problems. I went out recently to my uh, daughter and son-in-laws, where my two grandchildren live in Grain Valley. They're on KCPNL, and they have a smart meter and have had since they moved there several years ago. I measured it with this radiation tester. It was very high out by the meter on the outside of the house. I went to the inside of the house and it wouldn't register. I didn't register anything inside the house. I'm just telling you what, this is anecdotal, this is not a study, but I measured it. I wanted to measure and this is one of the older meters. I also looked at the meter, I could see what the meter reading was, and I could see the serial number on that meter. It's on the outside of their house, anybody can walk up and look at it. That is the only security threat, the only security threat with the smart meters, because that's the only information they transmit, the meter reading and the serial number. There's no other information, it doesn't have your name, it has no other uh, information that is transmitted. The last thing I want to talk about is 
the higher electric bills, because people have said they'll have higher electric bills. So I'm going to tell you just a little story, and the little story has to do um, with a lineman from KCPNL that lives in Independence. He asked to, to meet because he wanted to talk about several concerns he had with IPL. He wanted to meet with the head of IPL. And so I made arrangements for Paul Malberg and Leon Daggett and I to sit down with him a number of years ago now. It's been about three years ago. And we talked about several of his concerns with IPL. He told me this story. He had an old electric analog meter on his house. He lives in Independence. And it probably was, I'm guessing, 20, 30 years old. 20, 30 year old meter. And he'd been having some problems with some interruptions in power, and so they came out and they changed his meter. The month before, he paid $100 for his electricity. The next month with the new meter, he paid $230 with the new analog meter. He wasn't upset. He said, I know what the problem is. He said, it's an old meter. And as those analog meters age, they get less and less accurate. And so part of the problem has been in independence, we have not had a program where we automatically replace meters every 10 years, which Kansas City Power and Light has done. So we have meters that are much, much older. And people that have the older meters are not paying their fair share. They're not paying their fair share. Wouldn't you want everybody to pay equally what they are charged for a kilowatt hour? I think that's only fair. So the only reason the rates are not going up with this, the rates will not change. The only thing that's changing is accuracy. And if your meter is not accurate, yes, you may pay more on your electric bill. But it's only accuracy. It's not the rates. The kilowatt hour rate is going to stay the same. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Councilmember Doherty. Thank you. I have to agree that this is the way to save money, it's efficient, and it's what we'll eventually go to. My question is, why, have we got the best system? This uses a very powerful transmitter, others may not. There were five, six other vendors, they rated these from zero to 100, we only got to see the presentation of this one. Now, of course, the PUAB board looked at it and the engineers, that's the same ones that claimed we had to have 2.6 million and then tonight said, oh, never mind. That kind of shakes my faith there. We thought we had a labor agreement in place. We were told we did on what happens to the 19 positions. I asked for that copy of that a week ago and they said, well, we never got it done. We never got it done. So there's no agreement on what happens to 19 positions. They said, yeah, we'll keep their job. Maybe they were going to have 19 new dog catchers, I guess. So that's an issue that's not been addressed. Um, I'm concerned with the way this implementation's going, and I, I do agree it's the way to go, but have we seen what the other vendors have? Will other vendors have a lower power one that doesn't admit this much radiation? Will the other vendors, uh, we get a better craft, a better opt-out position? I would just like to, as I did six months ago, and say, hey, let's just look and have a presentation of the other vendors, have them come up here and, and show us what their equipment does. And something we never got to see with this one. And maybe we get down to it, this is the way to go. But I think in fairness, whenever we decide on concrete for a sidewalk or roof, there's always, we always get a packet with three of the top three and we can go through them and we as a council decide what's best for the people and not what somebody picked on dollars and cents or possible influence. So all I want is to this to be rejected and let the people come back up and represent, which could include these or whoever else, and give us the very best system. We're only gonna pick this once. Let's not pick it on the cheap, you get what you pay for. Let's pick it on the safest, most reliable product that suits us best. So that's why I'm not gonna support this. Thank you. Any other comments or questions on this ordinance? Madam Mayor. Yes, Councilman Perkins. Thank you, Mayor. Boy, after the end of studying all this stuff, I don't know if I'm ready to take my bar exam from all the legal questions <laughs> or take my electrical license. Maybe I can do both. I'm, uh, I'm a strong 90% on this. 
I think this is where we're going to move to it at some point. This is where we're going to uh, take the city. My, my question, I have question, my concern is I have some of the oldest housing stock in uh, independence in my district going from pre-World War II, post-World War II, all the way up until yesterday's build. The concern that I have is, is the possibility for, for fire sparking in some of these older homes, especially in the extreme northwest side of town. That's something that is a big concern to me. Some of these meters are, are in basements. Um, I'm not fully convinced. I'm 90 percent, maybe leaning towards 95 percent. I would like to see just a little bit more study done on this, how we can get the safest and the best. Um, but at some point, we do as a city need to take a strong look and implement such a program. Any other comments or questions? Madam Mayor. Councilmember DeLucy. We've studied it for two years. I'm ready to move forward. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Um, we have studied this for a long time. Um, at least two, this council has studied it for at least two years. Um, as was mentioned, some communities study this for much, much longer and bring it before their, you know, we've seen examples of bringing it before their council, sending it back, and taking much longer than we have taken on this. When we, when I recommended six months ago that we postpone this for six months, I thought that that would give us some more time to clarify some of these questions, and I think that we have gotten sound answers on some of the questions that we have asked. Um, the Advisory Board of Health gave us a very thorough report on the health concerns. In addition to that, I also made my own inquiries to various health professionals and public health organizations to ask about the potential health risk. I do not feel that there is a, a significant health risk associated with these meters. I would put one on my house, um, but I do believe, as Councilmember Doherty has said, that there are, there are more than one option in how this technology is deployed and the, the amount of transmission and the type of transmission that allows this system to work. I do not support an opt-out. I, if it's 5% of the population, 10% of the population, the purpose of doing this is to gain efficiency with our utilities and um, to gain the savings. I do not feel that offering an opt-out allows us to fully realize those. Um, I was not able to support the amendment, um, which I did receive um, just a couple of days ago on the proposed opt-out, because it really is only a temporary um, this particular um, amendment that Councilman Robertson offered, and I appreciate the work that you did on it, really is only a temporary solution, and I don't feel that um, that's what the community who favors an opt-out expects, they, uh, is a temporary solution, and I cannot support a permanent opt-out. Um, the security measures, again, we, that has been um, researched, there, I, I don't feel that there is an, a, uh, any more security risk than a lot of the things that we all utilize every single day. There is no personal information attached to this meter reading. It is your, you know, strictly the data. Um, but that is something that, um, you know, we have looked at. It's a lot of money to spend, and we seem to be very focused on independence, power, and light. But if you study this issue and read the ordinance, the largest expenditure will be made through our water department, and the greatest savings likely is to come through our water meters. I agree with Councilmember Robertson that the, we cannot continue to operate our city utilities if everybody doesn't pay their fair share. Um, so I believe that this technology ultimately will um, will be deployed in the city of independence and will allow everybody to pay their fair share for some people that's going to be more 
and for some people that's going to be less. But we can't begin to stabilize our rates when we don't know that everybody is paying for what they are using. We just simply, nobody would expect us to be giving away our water or our electricity for free. Um, I am not ready to support this. I don't believe that our community is ready for it. I would, uh, I would <laughs> postpone it again, but I think that it's time to make a decision. And um, I believe there's more work to be done before this could come forward as something that I would be able to support. But it is coming, and it is coming for a lot of good reasons. Um, but I am not comfortable with supporting it this evening. Madam City Clerk. This is approval of 17115 as amended with an opt out policy. Council members Whiting? Yes. Perkins? No. Doherty? No. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? No. Mayor Ware? No. Ordinance fails. Bill number 18-029, an ordinance authorizing a contract with VF Anderson Builders, LLC, for the Walnut Garden Storm Drainage Improvements, number 7013162, for amount not to exceed $157,481, authorizing future minor change orders for amount not to exceed $15,748.10, and or time extensions. Second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Whiting? Yes. Perkins? No. Doherty? No. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? No. Mayor Ware? Yes. Ordinance passes. Um, before we proceed with our first readings, I would like to make a motion to suspend the rules of order um, to allow for comments from our retiring council member, um, Council Member Chris Whiting. Second. Then moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll on the motion to suspend the rule. Council members Whiting? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Ware? <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Um, boy, what a night to go out on. This is, uh, this is democracy in action, and it's been wonderful to be a part of that for the last six years. Uh, Ernest Hemingway wrote the last page of a farewell to Ar a farewell to arms 39 times before he was satisfied with it. And that was because endings are hard. Deciding to leave this council wasn't easy for me. And now the actual leaving of this council isn't easy for me either. Over the past several weeks, I've had a lot of people call me or email me to say thank you for your time on the council. And while that's been very nice and I appreciate it, I'm the one who wants to say thank you. I want to say thank you to the city that's nurtured me throughout my life and that I've chosen to raise my daughters in and that's nurturing them right now. I want to say thank you to those of you who have entrusted me to help lead this city. It's not something I've taken lightly. I want to say thank you to the city administration and staff for the wonderful work that you do that often goes uh, unnoticed and you don't get thanked for often enough. I want to say thank you to this entire council for your efforts and your dedication and all that you do. And I also want to say thank you to the many people who've reached out to me over the last six years, either with issues that you've needed help on in your neighborhoods or with your homes, or who felt very strongly about a particular issue that the council was going to vote on, urging me to vote one way or another on it. And tonight's AMI was a perfect example of that. I have learned over the past six years that reasonable people can hold wildly differing viewpoints and still be reasonable people. You know, Shakespeare wrote that parting is such sweet sorrow, and I think that sums up exactly how I feel about leaving the council. It's sweet because I can now spend more time with my new wife, Jane, who's here tonight, and my two daughters. 
It's exciting because I don't know what's going to take the place of my time on council. But it's also sad to leave a job that I've enjoyed in a city that I care deeply about. But I take heart because I truly believe that this city is trending in a great direction. And I fully expect that the leadership of the council and the city administration and staff will keep us on the path to making independence better and better. Thank you. Member, I know I speak on behalf of this council and our entire city staff and our community by showing our deep appreciation for your service. And it's been a pleasure to work with you. You as well. Take a uh, five minute reset, uh, five minute recess, and uh, then we will reconvene for the installation process. Can I do that right? We should reconvene. We will proceed with the installation ceremony and the remainder of the meeting. Um, everybody second? Just do it slowly, will you please? I got a sheet for you. Oh, Our invocation for the installation ceremony is being offered by Brad Speaks. If you would please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me in prayer. Our loving God, one of the blessings of living in America is our form of government with a democratic republic that enables us to vote, to make decisions, to come together and reason. And at the city level, we vote on big issues and we vote on our representatives. When there's been a hotly contested election, after that election, it's doubly important that we breathe deeply, we come together, and we work together. So we ask your blessing on this council, on our mayor, on the recently elected council people at charge, at large, and on the existing council, as well as the city staff and on every citizen in independence. We have a wonderful community and a bright future, and we're very, very thankful that people are willing to step forward, put their best foot forward, and do what they think is best. We ask for courage and wisdom among our elected officials particularly if somebody feels the need to vote no or against the other persons. It takes courage to do that, and we appreciate that courage. Most of all, we're thankful for the good spirit that resides in this community, and we ask that it continue. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Our Pledge of Allegiance tonight will be led by Life Scout Jeremy Humphrey and Star Scout Clayton Hollenbeck. Gentlemen, if you'd please step forward. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Madam City Clerk, will you please call for roll? Council Members Whiting? Perkins? Here. Doherty? Here. DeLucy? Here. Robertson? Here. Van Camp? Here. Mayor Ware? Here. Madam City Clerk, will you please administer the oaths of office to each council member elect and the mayor elect? Will do. You know me first. Lower. 
I, Karen DeLucci, having been elected, having been elected to the office of council member at large within and for the city of Independence in the county of Jackson, state of Missouri, do solemnly swear that I possess all the qualifications prescribed for said office by the charter of the city of Independence. I will support the Constitution of the United States and of the state of Missouri and all provisions of the charter and ordinances of said city and will faithfully demean myself in said office that I was not at the time of my said election in arrears to said city for any tax, lien, forfeiture, or defalcation in office. Thank you very much. I, Mike Huff, have been elected to the office of councilman at large within and for the city of Independence in the county of Jackson, state of Missouri. Do you solemnly swear I possess all the qualifications prescribed for said office by the charter of the city of Independence? will support the Constitution of the United States and the State of Missouri and all provisions of the Charter and ordinances of said city and will faithfully demean myself in said office that I was not at the time of my said election in rears to said city or any tax, lien, forfeiture, or defalcation in office. Having been elected to the office of mayor within and for the city of Independence in the county of Jackson, state of Missouri, do solemnly swear that I possess all the qualifications prescribed for said office by the charter of the city of Independence. I will support the Constitution of the United States and of the State of Missouri and all provisions of the Charter and ordinances of said city and will faithfully demean myself in said office that I was not at the time of my said election in arrears to said city 
for a tax lien forfeiture or defalcation in office. <laughs> Ooh, sorry. Madam City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Council Members Huff? Here. Perkins? Here. Doherty? Here. DeLucy? Here. Robertson? Here. Van Camp? Here. Mayor Weir? Here. Our first order of business will begin with nominations for the position of Mayor Pro Tem. Madam Mayor? Yes. I'd like to nominate Tom Van Camp. Second. There's been a nomination for Councilman Van Camp. It has been moved and seconded. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Abstain. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> Okay, we will proceed with our first readings. Madam Clerk, Clerk. Bill number 18-030, an ordinance amending chapter nine of the Code of the City of Independence, Missouri to permit sale of certain fireworks. Bill number 18-031, an ordinance authorizing contract with Truman Heritage for Habitat for Humanity as qualifying community housing development organization for the development of affordable housing, utilizing home program funds in the amount not to exceed $363,070. Bill number 18-032, an ordinance approving the amended petition for establishment of the new town at Harmony Community Improvement District, establishing the district and making findings and authorizing actions related to the establishment of the district. This next bill has been written as a emergency, therefore it received two readings and then considered by the council. Bill number 18-502, an ordinance approving a final plat of RB Commercial Center at 20400 East US 40 Highway in Independence, Jackson County, Missouri, and declaring an emergency. Bill number 18-502, an ordinance approving a final plat of RB Commercial Center at 20400 East US 40 Highway in Independence, Jackson County, Missouri, and declaring an emergency. Second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? No. Mayor Ware? Yes. Ordinance passes. Um, we do have one more citizen request. Amanda Haskell requests to speak to the council regarding trash around the city. Ms. Haskell, if you'd please come forward and state your name for the record. You've really wanted to talk tonight. <laughs> After a long meeting. Welcome. <laughs> Okay, um, do I just state my address? No, just your name. Okay, my name is Amanda Haskell. Um, let's see, I'm going to read the last little paragraph on the message that you guys sent me back in the email. It says, we appreciate your interest in city government and hope that your appearance before this body will help to improve this community and encourage other citizens to take part. So I've been here uh, all my life from 27. I was born and raised, and it's been on my heart to help get independence cleaned up, and um, I just... There, I feel like the trash issue here is really bad, and um, uh, um, yeah, I can't be the only one that like realizes it. I mean, the 23rd Street, 24 Highway, Truman Road, the sides of all the highways, there's plastic bags blown in trees, and um, I, you guys have done a lot of speaking about how uh, there's going to be a lot of business here, and um, but nobody's going to want to shop here if we look, you know, trashed. Um, so I just I don't understand why there's not like a crew out picking stuff up. Um, I, I did come to find out that I guess there's a citywide cleanup day, um, which is awesome, but we need more than one day. 
and um, I've been trying to do a little bit here and there, but I can't do it by myself. I'm just one little me. And um, I think if we all come together, you know, we can get it, we can hit it good and get it cleaned up. And um, just uh, there's businesses, like their dumpsters areas are overflowing. I've seen a few around my area by my house, and I don't understand why there's nothing being done about it. There was a, an area by my house that is being used for a dump site for residents, I'm sure, who don't, you know, can't afford to pay for trash or whatever the problem is. But um, it's an issue, and I called. It took three weeks for somebody to get out there and, and clean it up, and by that time, it has been, you know, raccoons and possums done busted it open. And so um, I just feel like uh, that we can do better with this, and I would be more than happy to, you know, give me a truck and a stick and some bags and a crew, and I'll... You know, all of us, we come together and do it. Um, and let's see, um, you know, we're the, we're the fifth biggest city in Missouri, so we're pretty big. And I don't know exactly where the, you know, where Kansas City and Raytown and Sugar Creek and all that mixes together. You know, it's a fine line, I guess. But uh, Jackson County, I, I called about the issue, about the trash that the people were dumping. And um, I guess it took so long because we, it was nobody's property. It was Jackson County's property, which I think is silly. I don't understand why we can't just get out there and pick it up. Um, but uh, I just I don't know where to go, to, so I'm here, and I'm just hoping for maybe some direction or something. So that's all I got. Thank you so much for coming Thank you. tonight. Um, <laughs> Ms. Haskell, thanks for coming, and you certainly are not alone um, in having this concern for our city. I um, don't, we do have a lot, a lot of people in the community working on this issue, but we've specifically uh, given some assignments to our management analysts and our Truman Fellow to do some research um, regarding this. I don't know that you really have much to report yet, but it is something that we are certainly working on, so we will be coming forward, I hope, with um, some information to share about what our research has revealed and um, some potential recommendations to make to the council. Um, it's absolutely essential to our city that we, be, that we show our pride and be attractive and, as I say, you know, be environmentally conscious, so thank you for your interest in this topic and we will certainly provide you ways to be involved. Um, Madam Mayor, yes. can I interrupt yes, please? please? Thank you. Um, Amanda, thank you for, for your comments. Those, those are near and dear to, to my heart and stuff. Last year we had over 300 um, people that was led by the city, the chamber, school district. Mr. Speaks was on our steering committee to, to have uh, uh, groups go out and clean up our, our interest ways and stuff like that. Um, they're doing that again. I want to say it's in the middle, towards the end of May. Thank, thank you. So uh, between Fort Osage High School, Truman High School, uh, Van Horn, um, Chrisman, we're um, anticipating a large group again. 24 Highway um, reached out to Matt Killigan. He's our district representative from ODOT. He's assured us that that trash and stuff along there, some of those major bins, will be uh, picked up, cleaned up by end of April. So we're holding his feet to that. It's really disheartening because we worked our butts off last year to clean this place up and it doesn't take long for it to get to where it's, it's at again. So thank you for your passion with that. We can definitely get you plugged in somewhere. Thank you. Okay, this takes us to council member comments and I will begin on my right with council member Hall. Um, I'd like to uh, introduce my family. Um, my lovely wife, my parents are here my uh, sister and brother-in-law, brother and sister-in-law, and my two children and in-laws, um, and my grandson. Um, I just uh, wanted to thank all the uh, people, family and friends, and uh, campaign workers that helped me uh, through this election. And um, I want to also uh, thank all the voters, all the citizens in this city for electing me and um, it's quite an honor, and uh, I'm going to work really, really hard for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Perkins. Nothing's nightmare. Councilmember Doherty. Thank you. You know, we've uh, 
had quite the discussion on our little meter thing and like the two council members down there it's time to get it done it's time to get it done but so in the near future I don't know exactly when but here soon in the future I'd like to revisit this I'd like to see any qualified vendor to present to the council their product and explain its features especially those who have been pre-qualified by IPL and scored over 80 percent they scored these vendors anyone could bid off that wanted to and they had to fill out a questionnaire and then went through all the different uh, things they did and then they scored them and they some of them that scored higher and lower but 80 percent is a good number I think anyone who did 80 percent above could be have the option to come here and tell what their product does or what their product won't do so we can make an informed decision and get the very best quality product that's one thing I think because the savings is too good to pass up thank you thank you Councilmember DeLucy I complain. Here, we, here we go Amanda I complained about the trash and I got an orange vest all to my own mm -hmm. and I go out there periodically and and I pick I pick the trash up and, and people stop and and they laugh and they say that doesn't help and I say yeah it does it made you stop and I'm on a campaign you're too young to remember this but don't be a litter bug were signs in my youth and the children were taught from a very young age don't throw your trash out there and I think we've gotten away from that and I think it's time to get back to that. So thank you very much for your enthusiasm, and I will share my vest with you. <laughs> Second, um, I went to the Powerhouse Theater. A funny thing happened on the way to the forum last Saturday. For those of you that don't know it, we have a wonderful arts community in the city of Independence. And the Sermon Center has three different production companies. They are all wonderful, they all give plays, and it's really, I'm a season ticket holder, and it's really worth going, getting out there and enjoying a play with your community. There's a lot to be said for that. And finally, to everybody who emailed and called me, and I received so many phone calls and so many emails regarding AMI. I cannot tell you how many. I listened, I worried about it, I studied it, and I voted my conscience. If I voted the way you think, great. If I voted the way you don't agree with, I'm sorry we couldn't agree, but do know that I did pay attention to what you said. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Robertson. We had a wonderful annual volunteer breakfast last Saturday at the Truman Memorial Building. Uh, several of us on the council, as well as a number of the staff from the city served the breakfast to all the volunteers. So I just wanted to publicly thank again all those that volunteer in the different uh, commissions and historic sites for the City of Independence. We could not do it without you. Thank you, for Eric Erfer, uh, for organizing that every year and for honoring those volunteers. Um, although I'm disappointed about the AMI uh, this evening, I think uh, we should wait uh, before we pursue any more bids uh, because those that have already bid probably went through the best bid process this city has ever done. And I don't want them to feel like we have slapped them in the face and they have to come back and start all over again. So I think we need a cooling off period, uh, perhaps a year. Um, and we can do some of the more research if you want to on uh, different ways of uh, opt-outs. And we can have maybe some study sessions and talk about some of those things. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to say a fond farewell to our colleague. Uh, he was always reasonable, and he was always a class act, and he has served this city well. And I want to tell you how much I appreciate and will try to live up to what he's done as Mayor Pro Tem. I, the honor of serving in the fourth is great, and now this added addition to doing things for this city is really great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I want to congratulate Councilmember Huff and Councilmember DeLucy on their elections and uh, Councilman Van Camp um, being selected as our 
Mayor Pro Tem for this entire council, and the good news is you're not far from home, so you'll be at my beck and call fairly easily. <laughs> yeah, right, something's changed, right. Um, it was an honor for me to be elected as mayor four years ago, and I have to say it was incredibly gratifying to be able to run unopposed for a second term, but it sort of felt like business as usual. Um, it really allowed me to focus on continuing to do my job, um, to put in the same amount of energy that I have put in since I joined this council. Um, but I'm reminded it isn't business as usual tonight. Um, being, you know, taking my oath and accepting the second term as mayor is as great a thrill and an honor as it was four years ago. And I'm just so grateful to this community for your support um, and really for the support of the vision that this council has crafted together. It takes a lot of different perspectives, a lot of different expertise, a lot of time and a lot of energy to work together to bring this city to the place where it is. And um, we have so much yet to accomplish, but we have a wonderful um, way of going about our business. And I think that this community has been incredibly supportive of um, not only what we want to do, but how we go about doing it. Um, when I think back on all the wonderful, wonderful things that we have accomplished, sometimes I can't believe how much we've been able to do, but I really focus on the things that are left undone and how we can do better. So um, I just wanna say I don't take it for granted, not one single minute of it, and um, it's a true privilege to serve as your mayor. Thank you. Yes, uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council, first and foremost, we want to welcome Councilmember Huff to this esteemed body and uh, re-welcome, of course, you, Mayor, and Councilman DeLucy back. On behalf of staff, we certainly look forward to continuing to serve this council and make your priorities um, accomplished. I um, want to point out um, one piece of good news tonight. Next week at our study session, our Truman Fellow, Kristen Ayers, will present our third quarter performance updates relating to our strategic plan. Uh, I was reading a staff report today related to property maintenance, code enforcement, and those results continue to be staggering. Um, this council, of course, made a substantial commitment to that initiative a year ago with the adoption of your budget, increased resources and personnel for that. We are, um, have increased our proactive code enforcement cases by nearly 100 in the, since this time last year. So our staff are more efficient, they're looking for these issues and, uh, and making a priority of those. We've also completed nearly 20 more abatements in this time one year ago because of the resources this council has allocated. So um, as you say, there's work left undone, but certainly substantial progress. Um, and if Ms. Haskell would meet me afterwards, we get a lot of complaints, but not a lot of people willing to help. So if you'll let me know those addresses, I already have my cookie, so I'll hang around afterwards and um, get some of those addresses to help you out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please join us outside for a brief uh, reception, because I don't think we have many cookies left. <laughs> but I think our Boy Scouts uh, got a head start on us. Um, but, uh, please do, if you'd like, um, stay, um, stick around for a few minutes, and we'd love to spend a little time with you out in the hallway after the meeting is adjourned. And we are adjourned.